Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, it's gonna be another Forester video, and hopefully I will be saving your turbo, or if your turbo's already gone, I'll tell you why it probably broke. So if you're well versed in Subaru, like I was not, then you will know that the code P0011, and there's a few other codes that go along with it, but that's the code that I got. I was actually out driving around, I was actually going to AutoZone to grab some oil, do an oil change on the car, it's been 3,000 miles. So I was on my way there, I just put in the tune on my access port to do uh, stage one. Since I have the cold air intake, I just filled it up with gas. I'm like, eh, I'll just, I'll throw the tune on there, see how it feels, because I've been riding around on the economy tune. So 93 octane, stage one, pop that in, uh, felt it around a little bit. I didn't really push the car. I did a, a few gas pedal runs, you know, 30 to 60, just to see the response. So basically what happened is I was driving to the auto part store, which is like, I don't know, 10 minutes away from my house, and I got the check engine light. My cruise control shut off since I was on the highway. I was cruising like 65, and boom, shut off. I got the check engine light. I got the cruise control blinking. So I was a few minutes away. I got to the auto part store. I used my access port to read the code, and it said P0011. Basically what that says is cam position sensor, right hand side. Um, you can also get that code and it's on the left hand side. The sun is blinding, yet it's so cold. So sitting there in the parking lot and I decided to do just a little bit of research. Once I found that code, I'm like, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's my other O2 sensor that's gone out, don't know. Bloop, pulled it up on my phone and it's like really, really bad. Like that's, that's all the posts that I found was like, this is going to kill your Subaru. Like this is terrible. If you get this code, your car is dead. So I did a little bit more research and, and I haven't had any ticking noises. So my engine's okay. I haven't had any problems with my turbo. I don't have any whines or squeals or clicks or any adverse noises. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go over all the steps you need to take. You should take this if you are having this problem and you should take these steps if you aren't having these problems to make sure this doesn't happen. So first things first, oil change. That is the first step. I was in need of an oil change anyway, so I got an oil change. Um, I did full synthetic on this oil change. So that was it, it's the lowest end that you can do, preventative maintenance wise. Make sure you're good on the oil changes. Um, possible things that could bring up that code is just the wrong oil consistency. It's like it's too thick or it's too thin. That's what I read. So I did that. But step number two is the most important because we don't want our turbo to die. So we need to go in there and Subarus have a, um, a little filter in a banjo bolt on the oil feed line that goes to the turbo. There's also another one, which I'm gonna check anyway, since I'm gonna be under there. Those will clog, those will rip, those will tear. They're very thin, very fragile. They get clogged, they get unloosened. We're, we're just gonna go in there and we're gonna take those out completely. I've done my fair share of research. I can't find anyone saying that they took them out and it did adverse effects to their Subaru. There's been a lot of people telling, hey, take these filters out, and they've had it out for years and they haven't had any problems. So let's uh, let's take those out. And if you guys are new to the channel, I am working on my 2005 Forester XT. So what we're gonna do first off, of course, pop the hood, get under here, and what we're gonna do, my code was for the right-hand side, so 
if you're facing the car like this, it's the left-hand side. When you read codes, it's the other way if you're on the inside of the car. So this is the right-hand side according to them. The first thing we have to do is take out your air box. If you have the stock air box, you can watch my video up here where I changed it into the cold air intake. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this out. Basically, it's just the alligator clamps that are right here and the screws that I have for this heat shield. So I'm gonna take that out and we should have enough access to squeeze down in here and get it. And while I have my cold air intake out, I was having a problem. I'm sure you're not gonna have this problem if you buy this brand new because it comes with all the stuff. Um, like all I have is this little one that goes on top of here. That's for, um, that's for all of the wire harnesses that go over it. But for me, I was having um, noise issues and what it was was the bottom part down here was scraping against the bottom part of the engine bay right down in here it was basically vibrating against the bare metal down here it was making little screeching noises whenever I would come to a stop and the car would be idling so what I did was I just grabbed some hose that I had lying around and then cut it in half and put it along the bottom of here. So if you guys are having like some weird noises after you install one of these and it's like metal on metal, this is like a super cheap way of fixing that. All right, now that I have taken that off, the whole air box is out. If you have the stock one, you'll still have the little bit in here, but that's fine. It is going to be right here. This is where the intake comes in. Right below the intake, you've got that banjo bolt right there. That's the one we're gonna be getting out and it is gonna be 17 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get our 17 millimeter uh, socket, little extension on there. And we're gonna pop that thing loose. I've already got a little blue towel ready. Make sure you have a rag or something and put it right in there just in case you get a little bit of spillage of oil so I'm just gonna set it in there I don't want any drippy oil so here we go I am just loosening up once you crack it open it should be very simple to take out and there we go see how there is no filter in there there's the hole both sides no filter on the center because it's stuck in there so we're gonna fish that out and another thing is make sure when you look at these mine are pretty much stuck on there but you're gonna have copper washers that go around the inside of this also on the other side of that oil line on the bottom part just make sure you replace the ones that are on here so you have a proper fit. So I'm gonna grab some needle nose, I'm gonna fish down in here and try to take that bad boy out. And the one over on your right hand side if you're facing this way or the actual left hand of the car, over on this side we've got the battery right here. If you just come in, it is right here. That's the one that you have right there. Mine has a little blue smudge on it. Maybe they've uh, already come in here and done this, but this one has a lot better access. You can just come in here, get an extension, pop it on there, and um, yeah, do the exact same thing. It's the same thing over on this side. Same type of banjo bolt, holes on both sides. Right down in there. There it is. So this one has more wires and hoses and stuff in the way, but you don't need to remove anything to get to this. Just put a little bit longer of an extension, pop it straight down in there. You can crack it loose. This one was a little harder to get out. Um, I don't know why, maybe the threads weren't as oiled, but um, yep, there it is.
And once you remove both filters on both sides, that is your preventative maintenance. Or if you do want to keep the filters in and replace them and do that every few thousand miles, you go ahead and keep doing that. I am going to have no filters in here, so I don't have to ever worry about it. So that's the preventative maintenance side of it. If you still have that code, if you've taken the filters out and you've already changed your oil, the last thing that it can be is right down here. See, this is where your banjo bolt was. Right below that, there's a screw that's on top there, and there is a whole unit right here. I already unplugged, you can probably see this blue clip right here. I've already unclipped that from this black plug. This whole thing is one piece. Here it is on the side. This is your AVCS solenoid. This is the outside right here. All you have to do is take off this 10 millimeter bolt on top to get it loose. I'll put that up there. And once you take off that, it's basically free. You can pop it out. I've already dislodged mine. I, it's really hard to first get out if it hasn't been out in a while. Um, I, hopefully it hasn't been out in a while. But if this thing is closed up like that, the way that I got it out, hammer and an old wrench. If you just come in here, I just have a wrench sitting right there and the open side is just in the little grooves up at the top and tap it with the hammer until it go ahead and gets nice and free. So once that's free, that's when the, the work comes into place. Once you get that screw out, you need to get the solenoid out like I did. It's not out all the way. Here's the inside of it. If you need to replace these, what you're gonna have to do, let me push that back in. There's two hoses down here. Get out of the way. See, there's two hoses right here that are blocking it from being pushed out all the way. You need to remove those two hoses. And over here on the other side of the car, if you're getting a code and you need to replace the other side, there is a left-hand side. That was the right-hand side over there. So if you come down here, you're probably gonna have to take out your washer reservoir. It's just these two and then it, you can just move it out of the way. You don't have to unplug anything. It just pops out of the way. I've done videos where I've had to remove that. So if we look down in here, that is your banjo bolt. And so that solenoid is gonna be pretty much intertwined with it. It's gonna be below it, just like on the other side. So if we look a little bit further up, you're gonna have that blue clip right there. And then if you look a little bit further down, right there, that's your 10 millimeter that you need to uh, take out. And same thing on the other side, if you actually look in here, there's gonna be two hoses in the way. So starting over here, I have taken off the bolt to get this out and replaced. These two hoses right here, I took this, the little alligator clamps off. Now, I'm not totally sure why I have the alligator clamps on here, and on the other side, I've got the little pinch ones. Maybe someone replaced these. Maybe these are more high-pressured. I'm not sure. If you do know, put it down below. But I'm going to take this out. i got to take these hoses out, and I'm going to replace that. And I just got it in the mail. These little guys in here and take those out real quick but just like all my videos if you want a pair of these or just one of these or anything go down in the description i always link stuff that i use in my videos down there so if you do need some of these i got them online i got them on amazon they're like half the price of the auto parts store so that's why i got them there that's where the link goes to so there's a new one let's put it in Okay, I finally got that first line off. That was a huge pain. These two lines that are down here, they are um, hard, not super soft like uh, these ones you have up here, really flexible like that. These ones down here are very hard. So what I ended up doing, I took the alligator clip off of there, came up to the top and I unplugged 
the top portion of it. Because this is so hard and it's connected to this right here, every time I tried to pull up on it, it would just catch on this and then it would come back down. So I unhooked that. There isn't any clamps or anything up here. So every time I pulled up on it, this would be able to freely move up. And basically I started it with a flathead just getting underneath. And then once I got a little bit of space under there, I just grabbed my needle nose, jammed them underneath of where it was at, and then just kind of just shimmied it up. But man, that was hard to get out. So if you want to, taking this first hose off here, you can just barely get this thing out. Um, so if you want to and you don't want to deal with the second one, it's possible, but I don't want to scratch or smash or do anything to the new one when putting it in. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to take this one off and put my screwdriver under there and just kind of twist it a little bit like that just to kind of get it worked up a little bit, get it moving. And hopefully this one will not be as much of a pain because I don't have the ability to go up and take it out like I did that one since this other one swings around and goes down. So yeah, not gonna be able to do that. Okay, so I got the second hose out. My uh, little needle nose plier shimmy up method worked pretty well. So I've got it out just a little bit right now. And also another thing I wanted to add in is taking the 10 millimeter bolt out of this to give this line a little bit of flex for, cause it just scrapes by. Just that little bit of extra flex will help to push this solenoid out. And there it is. I just popped it out. And it does look a little, just a little bit gunky. Not like fresh oil, but since I did the oil change, I haven't really started up the car because I wanted to do all of these steps in order to begin with. So fresh oil change so nothing gets clogged up. Make sure the filters are out so nothing gets clogged in the filters. And I'm going to replace both sides, not just the one that threw the code because I'm in here anyway, might as well do it. So here's the old one. If you do want to test it, you can go ahead and put a positive and negative on there and you can actually see the little piece on the inside move up and down. But I'm just gonna replace it. Like I said, at the auto parts store, these things are like a hundred bucks. If you follow the link down below to Amazon, I found these for, well, the only ones on Amazon. These things are going for about $48 or something like that. Half the price. Just real quick before I pop this new one in, I wanted to show you guys there are some subtle differences because this is not a Subaru part, as far as I know, maybe it is. But the old one has a full clamp along the top, and the new one has half a one. And the only other difference I really see is here on the bottom, it's got that little divot there compared to the opposite on this one. So that's really the only difference I can see my opinion, this one is just a tiny, tiny, just like a millimeter shorter. But everything else looks exactly the same, so hopefully I'm not going to have any problems with this. And just like that, they're both in. The larger one was actually a lot easier than the smaller one. The smaller one took a whole lot more, probably just because it's a smaller hose. It's a lot more rigid than this larger one. But anyway, the solenoid going in was not not hard at all it was so much harder getting it out popping it back in was really easy except for the uh the o-ring the new o-ring getting this whole thing in and then it stops like i don't know quarter of an inch in then you got to pop it through because that o-ring is brand new a little bit of force it'll go in so now i have both of these plugged in i plugged in the hose back up here at the top so now I just need to tighten these clamps down, pop the screw back in over here, and then we can head over to the other side and do that one. Okay, so over here on the driver's side, first thing I'm gonna do, take out those two screws, just so I can get the reservoir out of the way. It's gonna give you a lot more room because we need to work down here. So there is the washer reservoir. This is what we're working with here. So this line's in the way. Right there is the blue clip to the top, so of course we're gonna take 
that off and then hidden over here we've got the 10 millimeter on top we're gonna pop that off and in order to get it out just like the other side there's the two hose clamps here and like I said on the other side I've got uh, I've got that style and then a totally different style over here so either these have been taken out or that's how they're supposed to be I don't know but Regardless, both of those got to come out. Same thing's got to happen. Well, it's safe to assume that um, these have probably never been taken out and they were seized in. So when I popped it out, this came out. Yeah, not the, not the whole thing. <sighs> so if we take a look at the older one, it looks like there is three metal pieces on here and they clamp around the actual unit because you can see it right here those are the three parts and they clamp around the rest of this and I'm guessing that when the voltage comes through here it pushes this piston that's right here in the center which eventually pushes everything up in that cylinder on the inside so what I'm gonna have to do now that this thing decided to fail or I failed. I don't know. Something failed. I'm going to have to get that little piece that's stuck in there and probably get like a screwdriver, a flathead or something, maneuver it around. This is not going to be fun. I don't know if you can see it in there. There's the outside. The outside of it is right there. You can see the little lip that comes out. Let me try to put it right there. The little lip of it points out, so I'm actually able to get something in there to pry that out. So hopefully this is not going to be an epic fail, and I'm able to actually get in there, put a flathead, and pop it out. But on the bright side, I don't have to take out that other hose. Maybe for installation, but eh, whatever. You take your win somewhere. Okay, I take back all the negative stuff that I just said. This this was so much easier, even though I technically broke it. I just put a flathead in there and then twisted it a little bit, just like I did uh, over on the other side, getting those uh, hoses out. That thing popped right out. And I just have to grab it. If my fingers aren't fat enough, and boom. There you go. Oh, just got oil on the car, son of a bitch. All right, so you definitely do not need to take that second hose off. There's more than enough room to slip this thing in there. I've just barely got it sitting in there right now. Easily pop it in there, and uh, yeah, we're going to push this in, put the hose back, clamp everything down, screw it in on the top, put the washer back in, and we should be ready to start it up and get some oil through there. Okay, first start up. It's been a while. It's been sitting here for a few days. So, so far everything feels good. Now I shouldn't have the check engine light because I reset the system because with my access port I put it back to economy mode like I said. So with doing that, it erased the code. So if it pops up again, then I know something else is amiss. But right now, I changed the oil, there's no filters, and I replaced both of those solenoids, so we should be totally set. And also another thing is if you're having rough idle or uh, your car stalling out, this could definitely, definitely be the reason too. So I'm gonna let this warm up and drive it around a little bit and see how it feels. All right guys, I just wanted to real quick, because I forgot to do it in my last video, it's already been posted, it's already been edited and whatnot. Something I did not notice when driving around uh, my parking lot, because I wasn't going fast enough, but after you put in that cold air intake, this car sounds completely different at higher speeds. See if you can hear this.
Thanks for watching guys. I really hope this preventative maintenance and if you did get the code, it helps you clear the code because this can be a really serious problem. Um, it could ruin your turbo. Um, if you're really mechanically inclined, you can pop that turbo out and check to see if there's any play in there just to make sure if you don't have, I don't have any noises, so I'm not gonna even deal with that. If I do end up getting noises because it was starved of oil, then I'm definitely gonna have to take it out and just replace it with something bigger. But I don't have any problems. I really hope you guys don't have any problems and you can watch this video before it gets too bad. So stay tuned for my next video next week where we do whatever comes to mind. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes stuff that hasn't happened yet and unreleased content that no one else has seen. And if you haven't already, watch that video. And if you watched that video, watch that video. And if you've watched both of those videos already, make sure you subscribe down here. Yeah, watch this stuff. It's awesome. And if you've watched that and that and subscribed, I love you.